In this build, I try to change a client's mind, cut my first bow tie inlay, and drill a hole right into the top of the table. If you watched my last video, you probably recognize these nasty walnut slabs. Well, I had quite a few left over from the last project, so when a client reached out and asked if I could build her a coffee table and she wanted it to be dark brown, I said, yeah, I've got the wood on hand. She sent this picture as inspiration. I said, sure, we could do something like that, but I wouldn't trust that base if she was gonna be putting her feet up on the corners of the table. It just seemed like a recipe for tipping over. She definitely didn't want it to be unstable at the corners, so I suggested a different light construction, something like this. I figured I could dovetail the edges or maybe do a waterfall with continuous grain. Nope, she didn't like it. She also mentioned it would be in a small space, so she wanted the legs to be less visible, more tucked away under the top to make the space feel more open. She then sent this photo of a piece from West Elm. Now, we both agreed this was overpriced veneered particle board, but that it did take inspiration from the first photo she had sent, and it would be much more stable. But I thought we could get the legs tucked away just a bit more and make the whole thing feel just a bit less... chunky? So I started playing with some angles in my fusion rendering. First, I wanted to make the legs V-shaped to give more room around the base. I liked this a lot and thought it would check all the boxes, but the top didn't quite match the legs. So I thought putting a chamfer on the underside would tie it into the base while giving the whole piece a lighter feel. Now this was it. It was unique while still pulling a lot of inspiration from the two photos she'd sent, and it would fit well in the space. So I thought. She did not like it. Nope, she wanted the blocky, heavy looking thing from West Elm. And what the client wants, the client gets. After cutting off most of the sapwood and getting my stock down to an 8 quarter thickness on the bandsaw, I could finally start playing with my new toy. It's a 12 inch parallelogram joiner with helical head from South Bend. The only jointer I'd used before this was my little 6 inch grizzly, which had straight knives and very limited adjustment of the infeed and outfeed beds. Moving up to this was like going from a Hyundai Elantra to an Audi Q8. Way more room, all the bells and whistles, and much higher build quality. I'm super impressed with it so far. It's easily handled full width boards without bogging down on the motor, and the helical head leaves a really nice surface. It's even got a digital readout. Now, I will fully admit that this is way too big of a machine for my tiny little one car garage shop, and I wouldn't have gone with something this big were it not for the fact that we're putting an addition on our house, which will more than double the size of the shop. Let me know in the comments if you want me to document that shop transformation, or if you're sick of shop tours and I should just stick to build videos. For now, back to the coffee table. I played around with the layout for the top, trying to get a good grain match. Ultimately, getting the best match meant I'd have to include the end of this board, which had a decent sized check. Being at the end of the board, I really didn't want to risk it continuing to split over time, so I figured this was a good opportunity to cut my first bow tie. But before we get to that, I needed to cut these to length and glue them up. In my last video, I had quite a few people ask in the comments why I used a hand plane to joint the edges before gluing up my panels. Well, my joiner was too small and not well enough aligned to get a perfect gap-free seam. But not a problem anymore. The new one left me absolutely perfect edges. I just used the in-out technique and a very shallow cut. If you're not familiar, the in-out technique is where you mark the face of each board where it meets the edge and joins with the next board in series. One gets an I, which means it faces in toward the face, and the other gets an O, which means it faces out away from the face. What this does is essentially cancel out any potential error in the fence alignment if it's at all off from a perfect 90. 
so that the resulting panel will lay perfectly flat. Some dominoes and a mix of parallel and bar clamps got me a nice flat top that just barely fit on my workbench. While that was drying, I laid out the boards for the legs. By the way, these mechanical pencils with white lead are great for marking up walnut. The only issue is that the lead is super soft, so I'm constantly breaking it if I hit even the smallest bump. It's a minor annoyance, but I think it's worth it overall for the better visibility. Since the legs would be small enough to fit through my planer after gluing them up, I skipped the dominoes here, knowing that I could smooth out any minor misalignments after. Now it was time to tackle that bow tie. I showed the client what a bow tie was and asked if she wanted it to be visible or hidden on the bottom. She liked the look and said to go ahead and put it on the top. Pressure's on. I had some figured walnut in my scrap bin and thought it would make a nice looking bow tie. So I used the bevel gauge to draw the outline and cut out the shape at the bandsaw. Then I cleaned up the edges with a chisel and smoothed out the side with some 120 grit backside sandpaper. Backside is the brand. Mark Spagnolo of The Wood Whisperer bought the small company that makes this stuff and sells it through his website now. It's got grit on both sides and it's great for little tasks like this or getting into hard to reach areas. I really like it and it's quite reasonably priced. I've learned so much from Mark's videos over the years, so it feels good to be able to support him in any way that I can. I'll have a link to Mark's site in the description if you want to try this stuff out. I used some double stick tape to secure the bow tie to the top and cut the outline with a marking knife. I also marked it with a pencil to be able to see it more easily when hogging out the bulk with the router. Speaking of which, I cannot believe this Festool router doesn't have a little light that turns on when the motor's running. When you're not using a template and you're just freehand routing, having that extra visibility makes all the difference. So I'm going really slow here, taking care not to get too close to the edge and just get the bulk of the material out. I felt like this was going pretty smooth so far for my first attempt at a bow tie, and then this happened. Yeah, I forgot to retract the bit, set the thing down while it was still spinning, and put a quarter inch hole right in the tabletop. Come on, Mike. But that's a problem for tomorrow. Right now, I need to finish this bow tie. With that mistake fresh in my mind, I decided to call it quits with the router at this point and move on to the chisel work, working my way closer to the knife line. Once I had everything cleaned up, I added some tight bond dark and hammered the bow tie into place. Then I used a flush cut saw, a jack plane, and the sander to smooth it all out. And finally, I added some tight bond and sawdust to fill in any small gaps. The next day, I had to figure out how I was going to fix this giant hole that I made. I decided to use the shaper to make the hole perfectly round, cutting it to a 3 8 inch diameter. Now I always save my offcuts while working on a project for situations just like this. I found some pieces that came from this exact board and marked the areas where the color and grain matched best. I fixed the scrap piece into the shaper workstation and cut on the outside of that 3 8 inch diameter circle to create a perfectly fitting plug. Popped it in, cut and sanded the excess, 
and use glue and sawdust again to fill in any gaps. Not too bad. After trimming the top to its final length, I taped off any cracks and voids and filled them with black tabletop epoxy. By the way, if you're interested in any of the products I used in this video, I'll have links in the description where you can find them. Most are Amazon affiliate links, which means I get a very small percentage of the sale. It's not much, a few cents or a few bucks here and there, but if enough people use it, it can add up. So if you're going to buy something anyway, I'd be super appreciative if you use one of those links. Okay, enough with the sales pitch, let's get back to this table. The legs were also trimmed to final length, and an eighth inch rabbit was added to the edges to provide just a little bit of depth to the profile. After marking the leg positions on the underside of the tabletop, I cut the mortises for the dominoes, which would secure the top to the legs. I used dominoes here because half of the joint was end grain, so the extra strength was needed. I did not, however, use them when attaching the little extra leg piece, as this was long grain to long grain and would be plenty strong enough on its own. The edges of the top got the same 8th inch rabbet as the legs. Finally, it was time to apply the finish. I used Natura One Coat, a hard wax oil similar to Rubio but with a better shelf life, a little more sheen, and a much lower price point. Really happy with this stuff so far. And the last step was to add a ceramic coating to the top, as this was a coffee table that would likely see a lot of use and spills. I love the repairability afforded by ceramics, as well as the fact that they're just as protective as a film finish while keeping that close to the wood look and feel. In the end, I'm really happy with the quality of the piece I delivered to the client. It's not exactly what I wanted to build, but it's what the client wanted, and ultimately, that's what matters most when doing commission work. I hope I can grow this channel enough to give me the ability to be more selective with the client work that I take on, and to build some more exciting projects that I think you'd really enjoy. So, if you liked the video and want to see me take these builds to a whole new level, Subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.